Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Britta Spiderski and today I'm over on the Simon Says Stamp blog showing you how to do a d technique with distress inks. Distress inks are some of my very favorite tools for creating awesome stamped backgrounds and I've been playing around a little bit and I have kind of figured out a way to do double clear emboss resist so I'm going to show you how to do that today. For more information, you go, can go to the Simon Says Stamp blog at simonsaysstampblog.blogspot.com or my blog at brittaswiderski.com and we'll have full supply lists as well as pictures of the completed projects for you to look at. So let's get started. I'm using today uh, Versamark ink, clear embossing powder. I have Zing from American Crafts in this Tupperware container and some white cardstock just plain white cardstock. This is from Paper Tray Ink, but your favorite kind of white cardstock works just fine. And you could also use colored cardstock or pattern paper as well. I'm just starting it with white cardstock so that you can get a good grasp of the con of the um, concept first. And I'll also be using a bold stamped image. So this one is from the Sweet Threads set from Hero Arts in Basic Gray. And then this is a background stamp from the Basic Gray Hero Arts Out of Print collection. So you need a more bold stamp and then a more delicate stamp. And your more bold stamp is going to be the one that stands out a little bit more. We're going to stamp this first and that's going to show up in white in the final project. So first I'm going to use my Versamark and ink up my stamp very well. and then stamp it randomly across the paper. I'm going to stamp it about three times just for a good triangle, visual triangle effect. And I find that this is a really nice number that'll give it nice, good balance and will look good every time. And just try not to overlap your stamped images for now. Now I'm going to sprinkle on the embossing powder and just make sure it's well covered and that you tap off the excess when you're done. Now that I'm flicking off the excess here, and you can do that by just tapping your fingers on the back of the cardstock, you can go ahead and emboss it and emboss it until your clear embossing powder turns clear and there's no more granular look to the embossing powder. It's completely clear and smooth. Now that I have my piece embossed, as you can see here, it's nice and smooth, does not come off when I touch it. It's going to resist the distress ink that I put on it. So I'm using four colors on this project. I have tumble glass and broken china, and then I also have faded jeans and chipped sapphire that I will use on my last layer. So I'm going to bring out my tumble glass and broken china and start by covering my entire piece in tumble glass. Now that I have the whole co piece covered in tumbled glass, I can go back and add touches of the broken china. And I'm going to focus it mostly around the edges and leave the inside fairly light. Now this is a really important step. You want to make sure that you dry this completely before you add more stamping and embossing on it. If you were to add embossing powder to it now, it would stick to this distress ink. Even though it's kind of dry to the touch, it definitely still is wet enough to blend and therefore wet enough to hold on to embossing powder. So dry it thoroughly with a heat gun or let it sit out overnight so that the distress ink will kind of lose that little extra sticking power that it has right now. So I'll be back in a second after I dry this with my heat tool. Now that I've dried my piece of paper with my heat tool, and you can tell that it's dry because it feels exactly like the back does. Completely smooth, not damp at all. And this is exactly the texture that we need it in order for this technique to work. I'm going to go ahead and ink up my background with Versamark ink. And I'm going to make sure to ink it up really well. 
it's going to need to get into all those little crevices between the flowers. So you want to make sure that it has plenty of ink on it. Then we're going to go ahead and set our piece down on the background. Hold it with one hand and smooth with the other, picking up all of that wonderful Versamark ink. And you can see it a little tiny bit on here, but it's not going to really show up until you add the embossing powder on top. So you can grab your clear embossing powder again and very carefully add on embossing powder over where you just stamped. So now you can see I have the embossing powder on here and it's perfect. I love this stamp so much. And that drying in between with my heat gun really helped to make sure that the embossing powder didn't stick to any areas it wasn't supposed to. So now I just need to run my heat gun over this again and emboss that wonderful background stamp. You can see now that I have embossed it and it, although it looks really cool like this, we're going to make it look even cooler by adding some faded jeans and chip, fire, chip sapphire distress ink over the top. And so now, this is where the magic really happens. Because we stamped in the bolder image first, it still shows the way that we originally intended it, but now this pattern is showing up in the background. So it's a little bit counterintuitive that you have to stamp the background second, but once you get the hang of it, it just looks completely fantastic though. And now we'll add a little bit of chip sapphire on around the edges just to really make it pop. Your last step here is to spray a Kleenex with a couple spritzes of water and then just use that to get all of the excess ink off the embossing. And this will make it especially shiny and we'll buff up that white to make it really, um, just really vibrant. So here we have our double clear embossed background. Doesn't it look wonderful? So I'll be back in a second to put together a card with this awesome background. So I've decided in order to make this card really work and to show off this background, I want to keep it really simple. So I'm just going to mount it on some craft cardstock and then have my sentiment in craft as well by stamping these letters from Quinn's ABCs to spell out thank you. So I'm just going to stamp these individually on this piece of craft cardstock and then cut them out and then mount them onto my background. And I'm just going to use my Spice Tin Jenny Bolin ink, and this is my very, very favorite ink. And it's just this perfect navy color that will go wonderfully with our card. So I'm just going to stamp these letters individually, cut them out, and then I'll be back to show you how to put together the finished card. I've cut out all my letters, and I'm ready to adhere everything down. So I'm going to start out by adhering my background, and I'm going to use my ATG on this. I'm going to make sure to get the edges really well because since there's so much embossing on this, it has the tendency to curl up. But once you get it stuck down, it will stay down. And I'm going to have most of the white be on the top because your eye automatically puts more weight on the bottom. So this will help balance the card perfectly. And now we can start putting down our letters. So I'm going to use glossy accents to adhere them down. And I'm actually going to start at the very end and work back to the beginning of thank you. So I'm going to start with the U. And I'm going to write justify it on my card. So have it over to the right here. And then just work as I go across the card. Now that I have my letters adhered down, as you can see here, 
I think I want a little bit something extra to offset my words. So I'm going to cut thin strips off of this piece of white cardstock, which is the same kind I used to originally make my background. And I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler, and this is really great for making thin strips because you can easily measure and see how thick you're cutting a strip and make sure that it's completely even. So I'm going to measure 1 8 of an inch, which is just the, up to the first dotted line here. Hold it down really carefully and then use my X-Acto knife to lightly go over it two or three times until it's cut through. And by going lightly over with my X-Acto knife and not forcing it, not only am I keeping my fingers out of danger because I'm not putting too much stress on the blade, um, but it also makes for a cleaner cut because you're only cutting a few fibers at a time. And of course, don't forget to ink the edges of these white pieces of paper. I'm going to use the chip sapphire and just carefully go along the edges here. Now I can use my glossy accents to put some adhesive down the strip. Just a really thin line will do. And then place this across the card right where the sentiment ends. Now that I have those strips down, I can just take off the excess with my pair of scissors. There we have it. I'm going to keep it simple and just keep it like this, but I really love how the background is really allowed to shine and then you just have the simple sentiment going across it. So I think this is a really cool technique. If you wanted to tone it down a little bit, make it a little bit less psychedelic, you could always use, you know, tumble glass for the background and then just use broken china over the top and then it'd be a really cool tone on tone effect. So I hope you enjoyed looking into this double uh, So I hope you enjoyed looking into this double embossed resist technique with me and learning more and having fun with Simon Says Stamp in this stamp timber. So thank you very much for watching. For more information, check out my blog at brittaswiderski.com or the Simon Says Stamp blog at simonsaysstampblog.blogspot.com for more information. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again next time on another video tutorial.